Greetings, my lovelies. This is Blake here, and I apologize for the tardiness of this video. As if me being late is anything new. Hey, in my world, late is the new on time. So if I ever actually get a video out on time, then just consider that as me being very early, and don't expect that to happen at all, ever. <laughs> um, uh, but this is even later than usual, so for that I apologize. Um, so today we are going to be talking about Deliver Us From Evil. I really wish they went with the original title, Beware the Night. Uh, that title is just significantly more effective, it stands out a lot more, and it's, and it's pretty unique sounding, whereas Deliver Us From Evil is a very generic horror movie title, and for some bizarre reason, I keep forgetting that it's called that. Uh, you'd think that me, more than anyone else, would remember the freaking title, considering how I grew up with the Christian religion. Um, so I heard that phrase spoken many, many times, but even if you aren't a Christian, whether it's Catholic or a non-denomination or whatever, everybody has heard the phrase uh, in many different works of fiction, or even in real life, so it's like... Why can I not remember that shit? <laughs> uh, so that's complaint number one. Beware the Night was such a better title. Um, but as for the movie itself, I thought it looked good based on the previews. I liked the concept. I loved the actors. Uh, the reviews were definitely concerning me, but it seemed like the few that I read from people whose opinions actually really mattered to me, uh, like arrow in the head, uh, you know, they seem to like it alright, so I, I didn't expect anything special, but at the same time, I really wanted to be impressed, because this film had so much potential, and it did have a lot of potential, but the final result was, it was okay, um, you may have noticed that I was also really late in delivering my written review. That is because I had very little to say about this movie, and when I tried to elaborate on all my points, I was just constantly drawing blanks. Uh, so that review is pretty short and kind of underwhelming, in my opinion. Um, but it's just because there really isn't a whole lot to say about it. Um, but what makes that even stranger is this film does have... Uh, some very unique weaknesses and strengths that should provide plenty of material for me to talk about, but once again, I just continuously draw blanks as to what I should say, so I'll do my best. Okay, so with Deliver Us From Evil, there are a lot of strengths and a lot of flaws, um, and whether or not you like the movie will be based on how you react to the strengths or flaws, and which side stands out to you more. Will you pay more attention to its over-reliance on jump scares, uh, or coincidences? Um, if so, then you might not like this movie. Or will you appreciate the film's atmosphere and like its strong character writing? Um, if that's what captures your attention more, then you will probably like the movie. Uh, for me, though, what transcended its objective attributes is the fact that it's different. Now don't confuse different with original. In fact, I'd say Deliver Us From Evil does not contain an original bone in its body. But it is pretty different. It stands out amongst the crowd, um, even though I wouldn't necessarily say it's better. Now, if you follow enough of my videos, you might remember that I'm not the biggest fan of these modern-day contemporary uh, possession flicks. To me, they're all way too alike. Um, to the war, you know, certain films like The Possession, the only thing I really remember about those kinds of movies is how much I dislike them. I don't really remember anything about them. Or then, um, you know, every once in a while they might switch things up a little bit, like Dark Skies is about aliens, but it could have easily just as well been Ghosts because it's pretty much the exact same kind of movie that all these possession slash haunting flicks are. Uh, so I am not a fan, but what Deliver Us From Evil did is that it combines the, the possession-themed subgenre of horror and combined it with gritty cop thriller. Um, and I do like gritty cop thrillers, and I actually think that these two very different genres go incredibly well together. Something about, you know, a cop on the edge who's kind of losing his sanity uh, because he's faced with so much evil, actually encountering a supernatural presence 
it just intrigues me. I'm also a huge fan of uh, Hellraiser Inferno, um, which is a very polarizing film within that franchise uh, for pretty much the same reasons. And I bring up that film specifically because it was uh, these movies share the same director. In fact, I believe Hellraiser Inferno was um, his first film. And this film has a very similar structure to Hellraiser Inferno and in that it just starts off um, you know, a day in the life of this very a troubled cop. Uh, we go through his various cases and soon we realize that there is a supernatural force that connects all these cases. Um, and, you know, I, th I thought it did that well, but many people will look at this film and say that it doesn't have much of a plot or the structure is just too episodic. Um, I understand those complaints. I don't agree with them, though, just because for me it was about the characters and just how they react to these various situations they find themselves in. Um, so I was cool with that. So immediately, Deliver Us from Evil got on my good side because I don't see these two genres put together very often, and I thought it gave me enough of both genres to where I was satisfied. So as a hardcore moviegoer, I see so many movies that honestly... I prefer different over good in some cases. So take, for example, Sinister, which was, I believe, the director's previous movie. Sinister, I'd say, was a better film than Deliver Us From Evil. It had more consistent writing, and it was, I think, scarier. Um, but at the same time, very little about it really stood out among you know its contemporaries. It was just another haunting slash possession flick, uh, even if it was a good example of those kinds of films. Uh, so, so I thought that was nice that Deliver Us From Evil uh, you know, took something very familiar, but then twisted it in a way that you don't really see very often. So that really did affect my judgment. Now, on a more objective level, I really thought that Deliver Us From Evil really succeeded with the character writing. I thought these characters were all very pardon me for using this very cliched critic key term, um, layered. <laughs> uh, they showcase, you know, a variety of emotions. So, you know, it just, this isn't one of those cases where they get a lot of good actors who can just easily sleepwalk uh, through their roles. No, they are forced to act because these characters demand them to go all out. Um, and I like the fact that the characters, they all have their strengths and their weaknesses, uh, the things that you admire about them, but also at the same time, they're not perfect. They're all very flawed people. Um, and yet the actors play them in such a way that you're always behind them, even when they're doing something wrong, even when they're acting like a jerk. I, I personally made a, a connection to these people and I cared for what happened to them. Eric B Bana is superb in this film, in my opinion. Um, I, I like Eric Bana, but I feel that lately he's been just taking too many easy roles to where all he has to do is look really grim, um, use his cool voice, but they, they don't really give him a lot of room to actually act. Well, this movie actually does give him a lot of room to showcase plenty of different emotions. Uh, so I, I thought he was great, and I thought the, the guy who played the priest, I can't think of his name, um, a lot of people thought that he stole the show. I disagree. Um, I personally felt that Banna continuously was the person I was always paying the most attention to, but I still thought the 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 priest did really well. He's also a very interesting character. It's always fun to play, you know, unconventional priests, and this guy is definitely no saint. But um, you know, I thought the actor played him very well. And once again, the more you learn about him and you realize that this was not a very good guy, uh, he, you know, he's always very likable in spite of that. Now, the big surprise was Joel McHale as Eric Banna's partner. Um. Joel McHale is primarily known for doing The Soup, and I am a huge fan of that show. I watch it every week, and I think Joel McHale is a very funny guy. I would have never expected the to see him play a badass character and then do it pretty well. Now, you never forget that this is Joel McHale playing the role, so that will be distracting for some viewers, uh, but I thought he did it incredibly well. When he, you know, pulls out his knives and starts fighting, um, I was totally behind him. I totally bought him as somebody who who could cause a lot of bodily harm. It looked like he put on quite a bit of muscle, and, and you know, he and Banna had a lot of good chemistry together, And uh, but at the same time, he is the comedic relief, and a Everything that he says and does, I thought was pretty funny, but it never betrayed the tone either. Um, so, so that's a rarity. Uh, 
And speaking of chemistry, I liked how all these characters, how they reveal their backstories and the more you learn about them over the course of the film, especially based on how they react to certain things. But everybody's interactions were compelling, so I cared about the human drama except when it came to the family. Um, Eric Bana's wife and daughter, it's just a very safe, fluffy subplot that I've seen too many times before. Um, it is, once again, a cop thriller cliche, but I guess because they don't interact with the possession angle as much, um, there was nothing different about that subplot. It just felt very safe and familiar and uh, dull, and I lost my interest whenever those people would come up on screen even though there was nothing bad about them i didn't find the daughter to be really annoying in fact she's pretty cute and i thought the wife did pretty well and i like how you know even though there's a lot of tension within their marriage um they do obviously care for each other uh but otherwise that subplot did nothing for me and could be chalked up uh, to being one of the film's flaws uh, where, what else can i say um i thought it was unintentionally amusing how Eric Bana's character never has to really report to his superiors, considering how much bad stuff is happening all around him, and he seems like the only connection between all these violent crimes. Uh, uh, you'd think that his captain would call him in and say, like, oh, we should probably take you off the case now, but never happens. Um, in fact, some of the other cops even see some of the more bizarre incidences that occur during this film, and they're just like, uh, what? Uh, so I kind of like that, but um, there is definitely some moments where you'll laugh when you're supposed to be scared. That's really difficult, um, a, a difficult attribute of possession flicks. You know, some of their mannerisms are going to be very difficult to take seriously. So, so yeah, I occasionally smirked when I wasn't supposed to, uh, but at least I was enjoying myself in some way. Um, uh, and there is definitely way, 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 way too many jump stickers. Now, some of them are really, really good, and most of them didn't fall totally flat. It's just... I don't know, to me, the film should have relied more on atmosphere and suspense, and then make the jump scare as kind of the, the climax of, you know, the scary moments, but uh, because there's so many jump scares, they eventually do start to lose their impact. Um, but in terms of the atmosphere, I, I thought it was pretty effective, pretty chilling. I loved the use of rain, um, the dark lighting, uh, you know, the dilapidated locations, the, the seedy back alleys, and the use of violence I thought was pretty unsettling too. But I will say that I was very disappointed in the finale. It's not poorly done or anything, it's just a very standard exorcism sequence. It offers nothing that we haven't seen done a million times before in better and worse flicks. Uh, nor does it even provide a different spin on an old formula. It's the same shit we see in most possession movies. If there's, if you've seen any exorcism scene, then you've seen this film's exorcism scene. So, you know, considering how the rest of the film was, whether good or bad, at least it was unique. Um, I, I thought it was very anticlimactic that it didn't have a unique ending. It had a very safe, predictable, and cliched ending, a total contradiction from the rest of the film. Uh, and I will say that, you know, Deliver Us From Evil could have been scarier. Um, you know, I, as I said, there, it definitely relied a bit too much on jump scares, and, you know, the atmosphere was inconsistent, even though when it worked, it worked really well. But I still think that the film is better than what a lot of the critics are, you know, leading general audiences to believe. I thought it was thoroughly okay, and the fact that it was kind of unique um, made it stood out much more to me, and that's what I ask for the most of any movie. Um, do you really think that I would like Dead Sushi so much uh, just based on its objective quality? No, the film sucks on a technical level, but because it's just so batshit and out there, I love it. And I don't love Deliver Us From Evil, but I do appreciate it for not being the same old shit that I've seen many times before. So, my favorite part of the video, the plugs. Um, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook if you want to know any updates accompanying Critiquing the Critics. Uh, I did do a written review of this, so please check that out. Also, I did a written review of In the Name of the King 3, uh, so please read that, but don't watch the movie. <laughs> uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later.